Howdy folks! This is number five in a series of videos on how to outfit your lab on the cheap. This one's going to cover chemicals. I've been kind of putting this one off because it's pretty much an impossible task to cover every chemical that you might need and come up with different sources, come up with ways to purify it, come up with ways to uh, actually make it if you can't uh, get it anywhere else. So I'm going to just cover kind of an overview of uh, what I have. There are a couple of trains of thought about chemicals, and mine's a minimalistic one. I just get what I need. I don't like to have uh, large quantities. I just like to have just, just what I can use. And basically I do that because I don't want a big hassle of having to dispose of anything. I don't uh, want to have to worry about leaks or spills or anything like that. So, so I just get what I need in, in small quantities and uh, go from there. Now the other uh, kind of thought pattern is uh, there's some people that, that sort of like to collect uh, chemicals and, and I'm not saying there, there's anything wrong with that at all. In fact, uh, that's kind of neat too. But uh, they try to get as many different things as they can. Uh, a lot of stuff they make on their own which is really satisfying I think to, to have something on the shelf that, that you've actually uh, you know done the reaction, did the the separation, did the purification or, or whatever and, and you had that material sitting there. And and also it's uh, really nice to be able to go down into your lab with something, a new idea for you know that involves a new procedure, new reagents, and just come right right into the lab and, and have everything that you need right there and, and, and go to it. Because uh, if you have to stop and either make a reagent or order one online and uh, you know Two or three weeks later, you finally get your stuff together. You know, by that time, you kind of uh, lost your momentum and, and kind of lost some interest. So, so I understand people who, who like to, to have a well-stocked lab with, with lots of different chemicals. That's 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 definitely a, a good strategy too. But I'm just kind of showing you, kind of kind of my my train of thought here. There's basically different kind of categories that the uh, stuff that I have and and the first one is stuff that you can get right off the shelf and use it as is. Uh, the second one involves uh, actually material that uh, you might need to purify and uh, the third one is stuff that uh, I might make. I don't make a lot of my own chemicals uh, but I do some. And lastly is stuff that I just outright buy because it's, it's, I don't want to fool with it or it's too complicated or I won't get the purity that, uh, that I might, uh, might want. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started here. Alright, starting with the good stuff first. This is actually from the liquor store. It's 190 proof uh, ethanol. So that's 95% uh, ethanol. Uh, it's a little bit expensive, but uh, I guess you can, I don't know about the legality, but I guess you can distill your own if you really wanted to. Or if you know a good moonshiner. Uh, this is denatured alcohol, which is, I think, mostly methanol that you can get right at the hardware store. And uh, the hardware store has a lot of, a lot of organic solvents that you can get. And I don't really have a full list of stuff, but that was one example. This is acetone, that's another one. But there's all sorts of stuff if you go on their chemical aisle and, and look up and down the aisle. Another organic, or, yeah, organic solvent, this is isopropyl alcohol. 91% right off the shelf from Walmart. Also from Walmart is uh, peroxide and uh, hydrogen peroxide and you can actually concentrate this I believe by uh, evaporation. I haven't done it but it uh, doesn't sound like a big uh, big deal. This is sodium hydroxide. It's actually lye and if you can see on the label right here it says 100% lye and uh, I'm sure there's some contaminants in there, but, but some of the solid drain cleaners also have other stuff like aluminum shavings and things like that to help activate things or whatever. But uh, get the 100% lye and uh, this is what I use for my sodium hydroxide and you know solutions thereof. Alright, this is something I picked up at the a garage sale. It's 
probably at least half full. It's boric acid roach and ant killer. And it says it's 99% boric acid. So there you go. I didn't pay hardly anything for this. And I got it uh, on hand to, to use. This is from the laundry uh, section of the supermarket. This is actually Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda. And it's actually sodium carbonate. So you can get a whole great big box of this stuff for, for not much money at all. And like I said, I put it in a, another container to make it a little easier and seal it. Also on the laundry aisle is this 20 Mule Team Borax. And I use this for all my Borax beads. It's sodium tetraborate. Like I said, you just, just like the washing soda, you, you get a great big box. And uh, this will be enough to last me for the rest of my life. I put it in a, a different container. The rest I probably use for the laundry. Also for laundry is bleach. And uh, it's, that's a sodium hypochlorite solution. And the concentration uh, might vary a bit. I think some of them are five and three quarters uh, percent. This is seven and a half percent sodium hypochlorite. Everybody knows good old baking sodium. Everybody knows good old baker. Everybody knows good old baking soda. That's just sodium bicarbonate. There are a couple things that come from the, the food uh, category. This is ammonium carbonate, and it's they say it's a baker's ammonia. And they use it just like uh, baking soda to uh, give leavening to different bakery products. And uh, th this, this came in a jar. I've also seen it in the, the little packets, kind of like yeast packets, but uh, it's ammonium carbonate. All right, getting back to the cheap, uh, I got some pool and aquarium kits uh, at a garage sale and uh, I guess people get fish and they they die and they, they still have their testing uh, kit available and the aquarium kits sometimes have stuff like uh, reagents testing for nitrogen this one also has a pH indicator which is bromothymol blue and uh, the I believe the pool kits have a phenol red. So for not much money, I got I got some two two nice indicators there. If you go to the pool maintenance chemicals, you can find a number of things. This is one of them. This is pH down for lowering the pH of a spa or a pool. And this is uh, sodium bisulfate. If you go to the gardening area, this is actually sulfur powder for agricultural use. And it's used to amend the soil and uh, adjust the pH of soils too. So you get a great big of that on the cheap. Uh, this is actually stuff that I got from a garage sale. It's actually a kit for making crystals for, you know, a kitty kit where you can make your own crystals. They come in these packets, and actually some of them I put in, in bottles, but uh, there's alum, which is aluminum potassium sulfate. There is uh, monoammonium phosphate, which is that one. And this is uh, an anhydrous calcium sulfate. So for very little cash, I got the number of chemicals that we use. Now this is more of a category of materials that you might need to do some separation or purification. Uh, this is no salt. It's basically potassium chloride. And you could probably use it just as it, as it is. There's actually one material that's uh, soluble in some uh, organic uh, solvents. I actually washed it out. And then I did dissolve it in water and filtered it because there's some anti-caking agent in there to kind of purify it. But uh, this is right off of the, you know, the grocery aisle here. So that's easy and uh, cheap to get. If you take an ordinary dry cell battery, not an alkaline, but one of the older uh, dry cells, sometimes they call them heavy duty or something like that. 
But if you take it apart, on the outside, uh, there's zinc that you can uh, get out of there. And I've used that for a number of things. There's also a carbon rod in the middle, which serves as an electrode, and you can use that for a number of different things. And the powder between those contains manganese dioxide. So from one battery, you can get uh, at least three different materials. There's a number of different elements here you can get from different places. Uh, obviously, aluminum foil for aluminum. Uh, copper you can get from uh, certain copper pennies uh, in the United States used to be all copper. And I think it was before 1983, but don't take my word for that. But you can also get it from uh, wiring. And this is a solid strand wiring that I peeled the insulation off. You can get iron from things like iron nails or actually from steel wool, which I don't have a sample here, but you know what that looks like. Sometimes you need a silver surface to identify a, a sulfide or other sulfur compounds, and these are a couple of quarters. And if you get a silver coin that's pre-1965 in the United States, uh, they're generally 90% silver and 10% copper, except for the nickels, you know, the dimes, quarters, and halves. And uh, so you can use that as a source of uh, silver metal. And this actually goes into the area of uh, manufacturing some chemicals, too. I actually made some uh, silver nitrate, keeping that in the dark, uh, out of the silver coin. I basically dissolved it in nitric acid. I precipitated out the silver uh, with a chloride and uh, washed off the, the copper. The copper stayed this uh, in solution. And then I reduced the chloride into silver and then I made it back into uh, a nitrate with nitric acid again. So that is one material that I, I did make on my own. This is a box of silica gel. I got this from a garage sale for practically nothing. And you can see the box is kind of old, but it's not going to go bad. Uh, not only can you use it for, for drying applications, but you can also use it to make something like sodium silicate. I needed ammonium oxalate, and like I said, I usually don't make too many things, but I did have oxalic acid and ammonium hydroxide, and I mean, it's such a simple uh, neutralization reaction that uh, I thought it would be quicker for me to to make it than it would be to click a mouse. So. So I made that. I did the reaction and then crystallized out the solid. Uh, this is actually involves a separation procedure. And I would not at all recommend this because it, it's quite dangerous because it's um, highly flammable and explosive. But I needed some diethyl ether and it's in starting fluid, those aerosol cans. So I emptied out a can and actually did a, a distillation and got out some really volatile stuff and then I got out the diethyl ether and then the, the main part of it is heptane which uh, has some uh, uses for different things too as a general solvent so I was able to get that and, and the starting fluid uh, can was really cheap too but uh, but it took a lot of work and like I said I wouldn't recommend anybody doing it because it's, it's quite dangerous and now we're down to the category of I am too lazy to make it, or it's too difficult, or I won't be able to get the same purity as if I just buy it. So the one source that I like to use, and I, I you know, I buy from a couple different sources, is uh, actually it's called Home Science Tools, and uh, you can get a very small quantity for a very reasonable price of many different salts. This happens to be potassium chlorate. But a lot of stuff is between like five and six dollars a bottle, which I, which I don't think is bad at all. And shipping is usually reasonable too if you get the, get to a high enough amount or it's free. Uh, acids, I don't like to have a large quantities of acids. When I first uh, got into this, I thought uh, I actually went to Walmart and I bought uh, like a half a gallon jug of self concentrated sulfuric acid. It, it was in a heavy duty container with a plastic 
wrap on there. It, it's, it's actually a dark brown because it has so many uh, contaminants. And you could go through a million steps to get some of those out. Uh, some just decolorize it, but it's still in there. For what I was doing, it, it really wouldn't have been a, a good solution. And, and two, I didn't want that hanging around. So from the same place, this home science tools, I, I got, you know, little bottles of uh, acid. You know, this is sulfuric, hydrochloric, uh, acetic, and uh, ammonium hydroxide. And, uh, you know, by the ounce, it's, it's a lot more expensive than buying the jug from Walmart. But I go through so little that, that one little bottle lasts me a long time. You know, if I break a bottle or I, or I spill this, you know, we're talking about an ounce or two of material... Or two, you could get the, a gallon jug of muriatic acid, which is hydrochloric. And uh, but once again, for the analytical work that I'm doing, it's, it's it has uh, contaminants that that, that are going to get in the way and make things difficult for me. So uh, you know, if I spill one of those jugs or get a leak or, or something, that, that's a major major hassle. And uh, you know, small small bottle here isn't isn't a big deal at all. And, you know, I'm only using a few drops at a time, and uh, so these last me a long time. So I'm really happy with uh, getting the acids and, and bases and stuff in, in the small quantities. Uh, another place that I go to is uh, eBay, only because it's... Uh, usually you can get stuff on there with very inexpensive shipping and in small quantities. So I've been able to find some, some stuff there that uh, that has been pretty much a, on the cheap, so so that's worked out well. Well, that pretty much sums it up. Uh, it's just an overview. There's all sorts of other stuff I have in the, the nooks and crannies here that, that I've gotten from different places, but that'll give you an idea. Uh, the best thing is to actually go online and, and do a search on something specific that you need, and usually you could find a, a couple different uh, possibilities of sources or, or making it on your own or places to buy it, so... For me to try to cover everything here and, and give you an answer on, on everything is pretty much impossible. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, maybe you got a couple ideas there of uh, sort of things that you can do or just get an idea of, you know, what I do. But uh, that pretty much covers it. So thanks for watching the video and happy lab outfitting.